tell you what, I think I like this crowd. <laughs> talk about being home. And the fact you got presidents of unions standing out there with other unions, I tell you what, man. I was, I was going to say, if you have a seat, take one, but you don't have any seats. <laughs> Look, uh, Deja, that was a, that was a great, she's pretty good for someone in the last year in college, you know, you know. <laughs> Deja, just remember me. When you're president and they say Joe Biden's in the outer office, promise me we won't say Joe who when I come in. <laughs> hey, folks, how are you all? <laughs> I'm going to talk about uh, more than just the NEA today uh, because uh, — and I want to — I've told your president I want to come back and just talk pure education okay. as well. But um, I want to talk a little more broader. And, Becky, uh, uh, thanks for hosting us. I appreciate it very much. Forty-six days to the midterms. We need to be crystal clear about what we're, what's on the ballot because there is a heck of a lot at stake that's on the ballot. Right now, right now on the ballot, there's Social Security. It's on the ballot. You all have paid every single — and every paycheck Check you got, you paid it. <laughs> you paid into? Holy mackerel. <laughs> anyway. But there's a lot, really, truly, there's a lot in the ballot. There's a, this is, my dad used to have an expression. He'd say, Joey, don't compare me to the Almighty, compare me to the alternative. <laughs> and we have a real alternative here that uh, this is not a, this is not going to be a uh, election that isn't of significant consequence. Gun safety for our kids and gun violence on the ballot. The idea that you start school this year and kids in many parts of the country are learning how to duck and cover Rather than — no, I'm serious. Think about it. Yeah. Rather than talking about reading, writing, arithmetic is a very different circumstance. Yeah. It's not right. It's not who we are. It's not who we should be. And, folks, look, the, uh, the survival of our, our planet is on the ballot. And that sounds like hyperbole, but it genuinely is. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, the thing that we found out — and everybody found out — there's not a lot of total t climate deniers anymore after they've seen what happened this year. But guess what? We got a lot to do. You got to say hi to me. <laughs> we go back a long way. She was 12, I was 30, but anyway. <laughs> this woman helped me get an awful lot done. At any rate, but right now, and it's not hyperbole to suggest right now democracy itself is on the ballot as well. Folks, I believe America is at an inflection point. And I apologize to — I'm a labor guy. I've spent a lot of time with all of you — not all of you, but with the labor movement since I got elected in my whole career. But — and I apologize if I repeat some things. But I think we're really at an inflection point. It occurs every three, four, five generations. It doesn't occur every election. And by inflection — Inflection point, I mean that these moments, these are going to determine the shape of everything to come after, what we do now. What we do in the next several years is going to determine what this country looks like in 25 and 30 years. It's that consequential. Now, 46 days to choose, 46 days. And the path offered by Democrats is con contrasted with the one offered by the MAGA Republicans. And by the way, not all Republicans are MAGA Republicans. So I want to make that clear. And for years and years, I had a reputation. I remember I got beat up in the campaign by saying that I wanted to unify the country and unify the parties. I used to be able to do that. But things have changed a whole bunch. The MAGA Republicans control the Republican Party right now, and that's self-evident. That's self-evident. So there's a lot at stake here. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that right now. Earlier today, after opposing and obstructing everything we tried to do to stop progress for the last two years, the House Minority Leader, Kevin McCarthy, went to Pennsylvania and unveiled on what he calls a commitment to America. That's a, th that's a, a thin series of
policy goals with little or no detail that he says Republicans are going to pursue if they regain control of the Congress. In the course of nearly an hour, here's a few of the things we didn't hear. That hurricane. And Minister for General Affairs of the Kingdom of the Netherlands for the statement just made. And I request protocol to escort His Excellency. The Assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Manasseh Sogavare, Prime Minister of the Solomon Islands. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. I have great pleasure in welcoming His Excellency Manase Sogavare, Prime Minister of Solomon Islands. I invite him to address the Assembly. Mr. President, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, let me first uh, convey on behalf of the government and people of Solomon Islands my warmest greetings to you, Mr. President, and uh, to the members of this General Assembly. It is indeed very humbling to stand here today to address this August 77th General Assembly as sovereign equals. I take this opportunity to congratulate Your Excellency, Mr. Saba Korosi, on your ele election as President of the 77th Session of the General Assembly. I assure you of Solomon Islands' support and cooperation during your tenure in office. I also commend the, and thank your predecessor, His Excellency Mr. Abdullah Shahid, for his assertive leadership of the General Assembly during an unprecedented period in our history. Solomon Islands is a member of the a family of Commonwealth countries and a realm state. So on behalf of the government and people of Solomon Islands, I express profound grief on the passing of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and convey our heartfelt and deepest condolence to His Royal Highness King Charles III, the royal family, and the government and people of the United Kingdom. Her Majesty will always be remembered as an aspiration, a figure of stability, dignity, and grace. May God bless King Charles III's reign as head of the Commonwealth and all realm countries. Mr. President, the shifting international system has generated renewed strategic interests in the corner of the world we regard our home, the Pacific. With super and middle powers coming together, seeking to strengthen their presence in the blue Pacific continent. Solomon Islands sees the global system as interlinked and interdependent. The recently adopted 2050 strategy of the blue Pacific continent approved by Pacific leaders and launched here in New York yesterday defines the Pacific region's priorities and strategic interests. The strategy offers opportunities that can be leveraged to benefit our people. The large ocean island states that inhabit the blue Pacific continent shared a common sense of identity and purpose. All partners that wish to work with Pacific countries must align with this strategy. Mr. President, the right to establish diplomatic relations between sovereign nations is a universal principle shared by all members of the United Nations. Solomon Islands had been unfairly targeted since formalizing diplomatic relations with the People's Republic of China just over three years ago. We have been subjected to a barrage of unwarranted and misplaced criticisms, misinformation, and intimidation that threatens our democracy and sovereignty. Solomon Islands has been vilified in the media since formalizing its relationship with China. This decision was reached through democratic processes by a democratically elected government. Our decision to establish relationship with the People's Republic of China is consistent with the United Nations 1971 World Resolution 2758 observed by most countries in this esteemed assembly 
and which also articulates the one China policy that Solomon Islands respects. I reiterate the call for all to respect our sovereignty and democracy. Mr. President, Solomon Islands has adopted a friends to all and enemies to none foreign policy. In implementing this policy, we will not align ourselves with any external powers or security architecture that targets our or any other sovereign country or threaten regional and international peace. Solomon Islands will not be coerced into choosing sites. And I'm reminded of the wisdom conveyed by the late President Nelson Mandela during an interview with Ted Koppel, which is relevant to our situation, and I quote, one of the mistakes which some political analysts, analysts make is to think their enemies should be our enemies. Our attitude towards any country is determined by the attitude of that country to our struggle, end of quote. Solomon Islands has no enemies, only friends. Our struggle is to develop our country. We stretch out our hand of friendship and seek genuine and honest cooperation and partnership with all. Mutual respect for national sovereignty, territorial integrity, and non-interference into the internal affairs of any country is universal and paramount. As a sovereign nation, we embrace and zealously guard these principles. Mr. President, looking at the wider region, the Taiwan Strait is one of the world's busiest trading routes used by international shipping. We call on all countries to be sensitive and not inflame tensions that can threaten the unity and security of any country. Any miscalculation could threaten international peace and security and could have disastrous consequences on global trade. On the Ukraine conflict, Solomon Islands call for maximum restraint by all parties and a de-escalation of the conflict. We continue to hear words of war in this hall of peace. We must be united in our resolve to seek peace and urge all parties to pursue a, a diplomatic solution to the conflict based on the spirit and purpose of our United Nations Charter. Mr. President, the COVID-19 pandemic, climate change, impact of global conflicts, and domestic civil unrest have jeopardized our process in delivering against the Sustainable Development Goals and the 2030 Agenda. It undermined our ability to graduate out of LDC status in, in 2024. Solomon Islands experienced negative economic growth due to the closure of international borders since COVID-19 was de declared a global pandemic more than two years ago. These circumstances have changed the landscape uh, for our progress and sustainable development. We, we will collaborate with partners to undertake in-depth assessment on our readiness to graduate uh, out of the LDC status in 2024. Mr. President, Solomon Islands joined other countries in the Blue Pacific continent who are signatories to the Rarotonga Treaty to maintain a nuclear-free Pacific. We encourage nuclear power states who have signed the Rarotonga Treaty to take the steps to ratify the treaty which is aligned to the Treaty on Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons. We reiterate our call for the total elimination of nuclear material, nuclear weapons, and nuclear-powered military assets in our Blue Pacific. Solomon Islands also echoes the concerns expressed by other Pacific countries on the proposal by Japan to discharge ALPS-treated nuclear water from the Fukushima Daiichi uh, nuclear power plant into the ocean because of potential transboundary and uh, intergenerational implications. Mr. President, I'm pleased to inform the General Assembly that Solomon Islands has now legally formalized the de uh, delimitation 
of all five of our maritime boundaries with Australia, Papua New Guinea, Vanuatu, France, and Fiji. With the completion of all five uh, maritime boundaries, our rights and obligations are protected uh, under UNCLOS in, in, in perpetuity. In this connection, the Solomon Islands government supports the ongoing undertaking, ongoing work undertaken by the United Nations International Law Commission on the question of sea level rise and sovereignty. The position taken by the Solomon Islands is that once the sign instruments are deposited with the United Nations, our boundaries have achieved permanent status. This also upholds the principles of stability, security, certainty, and perpetuity enshrined in UNCLOS. Mr. President, Solomon Islands is a post-conflict country, and uh, our work to address the underlying causes of this conflict is still a work in progress. Sadly, in November 2021, this process was seriously hampered by civil unrest and rioting that uh, exposed the country's security and e economic uh, fragility. We welcome any assistance in addressing our post-conflict challenges. On a brighter note, Solomon Islands will, for the first time, be hosting the Pacific Games in 2023. This event will strengthen the unity of our nation and, all, and will contribute to our nation building and uh, peace building processes. I take this opportunity to thank our partners that have, all, have so far assisted us in our preparation to host the Games, including the People's Republic of China, who funds the uh, bulk of the Games facilities, the Republic of Indonesia, uh, Australia, Papua New Guinea, and uh, Japan. The UN Security Council has failed to pass stronger sanctions on North Korea for its recent missile launches. The U.S. resolution was vetoed by China and Russia as expected. The South Korean government has expressed deep regret over the veto. Our E.T. Yoon has more. North Korea's two closest allies said no to a United States-led U.N. resolution on Thursday. The U.N. Security Council resolution would have imposed new